Hey guys, welcome to today's video, which is Q&A number two. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions. Much appreciated. Some of them I've had to miss out because they were either talked about in the previous Q&A video or they were just too complex to answer in a short video. And I want this video to be a lot shorter than the last one because it was around 20 minutes long or something like that. So sorry if I didn't answer your question in this video, but if you really want to know the answer, then just feel free to send me an email or a Facebook message or something like that. And I'll do my best to get back to you. Let's get into it. How old are you? 22 years old, like the Taylor Swift song. Points to remember for legato and or sweet picking. Well, I'm not a sweet picker um, in any way. So you're asking the wrong guy, but for legato, be mindful of when you release your finger from a fret, not to um, have it move too far away from the fretboard like this. You don't want to do that. You want to have your fingers in close proximity to the strings at all times, so that when you need to fret a note, your finger's right there. And not like this. Hey Ross, if I want to transcribe a solo, how can I do that? I use a program called Transcribe. It's from a website called Seventh String. And it's very good because it allows you to loop specific sections of a track and just repeat them over and over again, which is really useful for transcribing. And it also allows you to slow down the track to whatever tempo you want. Um, and it man maintains the pitch of the track when you do that as well, which is extremely handy. Some software, only allows you to like slow down the track, but that also slows down, or that also lowers the pitch, which is just not useful at all. So transcribe, definitely recommend that. Check it out if you're able to. I think it costs about $20. Hey Ross, what pedals are you using? Currently I'm only using the Dunlop Crybaby Mini Wah pedal and the Sur Eclipse Dual Overdrive slash Distortion. Hey Ross, are you still using the Axe FX? How do you have it set up for recording and monitoring? Yeah, I use it every day. Um, I use it as my USB interface. So I use the USB out from the Axe FX, plug that into my laptop. Then for monitoring, I have two Yamaha HS5 monitors that are just plugged in using jack cables into the left and right outputs on the Axe FX. By the way, if you're hearing a lot of street noise in this video, that's because the window in this room is facing onto quite a busy street in Edinburgh, but I have ordered a sort of sound absorbing blanket to hang over the window. So in future videos, once that's hung up and I've got sound absorbing foam on these walls as well, then the sound should be a lot better in these videos. How do you know when you are done practicing a lick or concept? What are your thoughts on flow states slash performance mindsets? Does this factor into how you practice? Uh, flow states are something that I've only just started to read about myself recently. I think it's really interesting. If you don't know what they are, it's basically when you're so engrossed in what you're doing that um, you don't really notice time passing and nothing else seems to really matter in that moment. So that can happen when you're cooking, um, when you're playing a video game, um, reading, uh, watching a film, practicing guitar, playing music live. It commonly happens when playing music live, I find for me that's when I most commonly enter a flow state. And I'm really interested in, in how to access flow states more regularly. And I've actually just started meditating again because I've read that that's apparently very good for accessing flow states. So yeah, it does factor into how I practice because as long as I'm practicing something I'm really interested in and I feel like I'm making some sort of progress, then that um, increases the chance of me entering a flow state and just getting sort of lost in it and getting in the zone when I practice. So yeah, flow states are cool. And how do you know when you're done practicing a liquor concept? Mm, that's a tough question to ask really. As for licks, I guess when you're able to play it, you know, 10 times out of 10 cleanly without mistakes. Um, for concepts, like, you know, scales and harmony, you're never really done, you're always learning. What's the forecast date for your new music course? It will be done by June because I'm very busy in June and July. I'm going to a few places in Europe, I'm going to Hungary and Serbia, and then at the end of June, I'm traveling to New York. I'm going to be spending a little bit of time there, 
and then I will be spending about five weeks in Nashville, which I'm very excited about. So it needs to be done before June. So it will be done before June. Hi, I noticed you may be going back to a more traditional pedal board. Do you have any favorite dirt pedals and why? One of the best channels I came across recently. Thanks very much, Nicholas. Yeah, I do have favorite dirt pedals. The Sir Eclipse, obviously, which I just bought myself and the J Rocket Archer Icon and the Dude. Those are both amazing, amazing overdrive pedals. Just check them out if you get a chance, honestly. They're just, they're just great. That's why I love them, because they're great. Any tips on how to make better use of tension and release in improvisation or resolution in improvisation, sorry. Yeah, use it sparingly. Don't do it all the time. In blues progressions, you can add in the whole tone scale when moving from the one chord to the four chord, which is a great way of adding a sort of outside sound, which creates tension and that tension is released when you land on a note from the four chord. I do that sometimes in blues progressions, but I don't use it all the time because then it starts to become this predictable thing which you don't want. And you know, you want it to, you don't want it to sound like, oh, look at me, I learned a new scale, if you know what I mean. So use it sparingly and uh, tastefully. Uh, what would be the content of your second course that you're currently working at? Uh, second question, I'm in a bit of a dilemma about going for your first course because I can't figure out if it's just guitar theory with exercises, i.e. scales and how to practice, or if it also teaches you how to incorporate material into your playing. So the first question, modes are going to be a big part of my second course, which is being worked on right now. As well as that, there will be some stuff about blues improvisation, um, soloing minor keys probably as well. I don't want to give away too much because it's still being worked on and I don't want to make any false promises about what will and what won't be in the course. So um, for now, I'll just say that modes are definitely going to be a big part of it. And your second question, yes, the course is a lot about guitar theory and how to practice theoretical concepts like scales and triads, but it also shows you how to incorporate those things into your rhythm and lead playing. So it's like you learn about the theory behind scales and triads and, and other concepts as well. You learn how to practice scales and triads and you also learn how to use them in your improvisational playing. And it's not just scales and triads, that those are just two examples, but basically you go through those three stages of understanding how to practice, how to use in your playing. What's the thing that helps you most on guitar? Congrats on the new apartment. Thanks very much, Jaden thing that helped me most on guitar without a shadow of a doubt was sitting down and learning the notes of the fretboard. I can't stress enough like how many doors that opened for me as a player. Oh, sorry, someone's at the door. Uh, where was I? Hey Ross, I'm 32 and I've only just started to learn the guitar. Is it too late to start learning or should I stick at it? It's not too late to start learning as long as you enjoy what you're doing. Um, I get messages from people on Udemy quite often telling me that they're like 60 years old and they've only just started learning music theory, but they're glad that they did. So that just goes to show that no, as long as you're, no, it's not too late to start learning as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. Ross, are you going to do any improvising lessons? Yeah, I'll always be doing improvisational content on this channel, so you can expect to see a lot more of that in the future. I'm actually making one right now about how to take scales and turn them into music so that you're not just playing solos that sound like you're practicing scales and you're actually able to come up with melodic solos that people would want to listen to. Know of any decent open jam sessions in Edinburgh? Uh, I know there's one at Banshee's Labyrinth on a Wednesday night. Might have done that myself before. And I believe there are also quite frequent jam sessions at a place called the Dog House on Nicholson Street, so maybe check those out. Um, there's probably jam sessions at the Jazz Bar as well, so that might be worth looking into as well. And to finish up, Clinton had two interesting questions. One was, how as a guitarist can I earn money, not merely pocket money, but something to put food on the table at the end of the month? Probably not a one sentence answer. Um, any musician, when they're starting out, you needs to have more than one income stream. So if, for example, you play gigs and bars at the weekend and that's all you do, don't expect that to, don't expect to be able to depend on that alone for your entire income. You need to, well, in my opinion, you need to be doing other things on top of that as well, like playing in other bands and doing gigs with other bands and 
doing teaching and online work or I don't know any any sort of thing maybe you're a songwriter um, try and look to get a publishing deal so that you can start monetizing your songs you know there's a lot of things you can be doing don't try and stick to one thing because it could all crumble and this is just very basic financial advice but any paycheck you get as a musician well as anyone really you should be saving a specific amount of that paycheck so that you have a sort of rainy day fund. I'm following your Udemy course and see that there are 1810 students that's 1809 more than me is this figure local or is it global understand if you don't want to answer this one answer for me is indicative of who's actually interested in putting in the work and merely a curiosity. Uh, well today I think there's about 2200 students um, and that figure is global, it's across 81 countries, so uh, lots of people from all over the world have bought it, which just feels amazing. If you're one of those people, thanks so much, really do appreciate your support. Uh, my camera is about to die, so that's all we've got time for today. Again, if your question wasn't answered in this video and you really do want me to give you some sort of advice or something, then feel free to send me a message on Facebook and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks everyone for watching today's Q&A video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very soon.